Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to us, to Soto Brown and Martin Despang, relentlessly believing that we can reintroduce humanity and humility into our architecture here on our island of Oahu, Honolulu, Hawaii. Is that right? Well, we do pursue that. That is true. Okay. That is true. That's our dream. But sometimes in order to do so, we got to point our finger into some wounds. And yep. talking paradise, let's bring up the first picture. This is probably the most iconic uh, symbol of our paradise here. And that's what we, in our hood, you look from that to yes. me and I look up to you. That's right. Literally and figuratively. And so this is our hood. And in the foothills of Diamond Head, uh, so this is paradise. Now we see peril. And peril is the next picture because the foothills, as we can see, can we get the next picture? This I was taking a picture of some many years ago now, and this is a lot at the corner of Cohio Avenue and Kapahulu Avenue. And I was shocked to see in this sort of prime piece of land facing the zoo where one should go multi-story. I was shocked to see that one story little thing there. And I was very happy because that sign disappeared and didn't show up for many years. And I was hopeful until next picture, uh, we could see some activities going on recently. And so the next like 10 pictures or so is basically me portraying that on my daily bicycle commute to work. And here, can we go back to the last picture? Uh, it was just like some, um, you know, CMU walls going up. So I, I still had the hopes. I thought like maybe there's some innovative construction that would go higher. But then the next picture clearly showed this is it. The bond beam came on. But it still had, especially the lower picture, had some very utilitarian, almost Miesian. There comes my nationalist, yeah. you know, dreaming. No, but I see what you're saying, and I and I can see that that is a nice, plain structure that looks mm -hmm. like it's got some promise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then above there, you see some other material being introduced, and we can already jump to the next picture because then all of a sudden, the roof occurred, and the roof. I'm, I've always been obsessed with uh, raw construction because it, in many cases, looks so more elegant than when it's yes. finished and it gets sheathed. Yep. And it has a lot to do, actually, uh, this is the case anywhere in the world, but particularly here where there was climatically not that right. need to wrap everything. Right. The traditional architecture was raw and tectonics, right? Correct. Just celebrated. Right. So once again, you could give it the benefit of doubt and saying, oh, you know, this is very filigree, so maybe this is sort of... Um, alluding to maybe it'll be nice and open and maybe open it's lattice. nice and open and even if you think about the materiality this is what you call a light gauge steel so it's like the cheapest way it's just almost like paper thin cut steel or metal plates or, or strips that's just like um, you know you put something up and the next picture and this is the roof and so this is the roof here where you can see the shape of the roof wants to be that very sort of known to us dicky double hip Correct. roof. Right. Which is tradition. Right. Well, it's almost a cliche. It's, it's become, a, it's it's become a, cliche. a cliche of, of architecture in Hawaii, although it is an indigenous form, not mm -hmm. Hawaiian necessarily, but introduced by Westerners. Mm -hmm. But it was something developed here, and it was therefore something uh, traditional from the 19th and 20th yeah. centuries. Yeah. And then it turned. It has turned into kind of this marker of saying, "Look, we're building a Hawaiian building." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even though we're not doing it, we're doing it less and less because this here is hiding a dirty secret. Right. And the dirtiness is oil that we burn, and that's what happens behind that white box. And this is where the AC is yes. going to be camouflaged and hidden. Yes. So it's going to, you know, as you perfectly point out, saying, I'm Hawaiian. Right. But actually, I'm invasive, you know, mainlandish. When you look um, behind. When you look behind. The facade. The facade, exactly. And that next picture, I was zooming in. That sort of um, almost orgy of this sort of um, light gauge steel continues to be the same on the inside. So everything is like metaled and metal again doesn't grow on any tree no, here. No, it does not. I have not. I mean, we're talking about ironwood later, but that's <laughs> That's not the same thing. Right? 
So we don't. And, and you know, let me also just point out too. You, you are an architect and an experienced builder, and I am a layperson who has not done this. So your take on these things is different than what mine would be mm -hmm. as a layperson looking at it. You are explaining to me what's behind these things, which I wouldn't be aware of. But as you would pointed out, this is probably just going to get sheathed with drywall. Exactly. And drywall is this really easy to use stuff. You can cut it easily. You can mount it easily. You can cover it up. But it has some detriments. It is so flimsy that holes get poked in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you have pointed out, it gets moldy. If it gets wet, it will warp and it will mold. So it might be a dry wall in the desert, but, but it here ain't. it's a wet yeah, wall. So even the, wall. the term that, that the industry gave it is ironic <laughs> yeah, here right. for us on the island. Right. right? So <laughs> next picture, um, then the roof gets put on and it's thin metal, uh, thin uh, plywood. And so next picture is when, when I hear these most... Uh, gruesome diesel engines that I'm, I'm believing they ship here because they probably don't get any permit anymore. And they, I've never heard engines that are like so dinosaur like, like here. So these trucks come and they truck in these, uh, this, this stuff, the, the plywood. So it comes in best case from the Pacific Northwest, right. which is quite some miles down the ocean. It certainly is. Uh, it's, it's by the way where the term trade winds come from. Correct. But they weren't using diesel, they were using sails and, and due to the wind That's direction, right. sailed straight down. Right. Uh, this gets dieseled in and then it gets dieseled on our island and I just love that sort of fetishization of the exhaust pipes. Exactly. How they're chromed and yep. They're so proud of what they're doing, but what they put out actually ends up on Malanai, which right. I have to sweep like at least once a week. And this is a view that you feet. see exactly. from your exactly. from your apartment looking down. This is these these are literally what's going by to the construction site right near where you live. So exactly. you see it and hear it. Exactly. And since you're kindly still teaching me my second language, oh, okay. how, how is that disease called that young uh, babies pick up shortly or can pick up shortly after they are born and they turn yellow? That is called jaundice. Okay. Jaundice is a condition that uh, I think is from like some chemical imbalance and you mm -hmm. can get rid of it very mm -hmm. quickly, but mm -hmm. babies do sometimes turn yellow and okay. you've got to be dosed with something to okay. get them okay. So the next picture, this is what our building then Became all of jaundice. a sudden had. So it's that, a newborn. That little newborn all of a sudden got that disease. Right. And uh, when we look closer, next picture, it's basically painting this over. And we see another yellow introduced, and that's, that's the labeling is cut off, but it says dense glass. And you guys have seen this all over the place. It's basically the water membrane that tries to keep the water out of the building, mm -hmm. which again, in indigenous cultures have been done more cleverly because they just made that roof so, so huge and overhanging that that kept the water out. Right. And so here, uh, besides, one can argue about the aesthetics of that, which is a, a term Jay just gave us on the way before we sneaked in here. But let's think about <coughs> the building also in a thermal way, where the traditional right. hollies had been easy breezy and keeping it cool. Right. Here you see that sort of very value engineered thin CMU. Yes. That's so thin that, as you can see here, the sun is hitting that. Mm -hmm. It's going to transfer right through. Yes, it but is. But then that AC is blasting in there, right. and the hidden machine is going to do the job. So Correct. who cares? And, and so energy is being expended to counteract the sun, which is beating on the side of the building. Exactly. Right. So the next picture is a, another rule for the indigenous ancestors was like, not create any cavities where right. humidity can trap, right. where critters can hide. Yes. So this is what we're doing here. Someone had opened that again. You can see all these nice dwelling spaces for things like that, mm -hmm. which makes you wonder, do you want to do that? Right. So right. the next picture is uh, the roof membrane got on. And this is pretty much the condition. It was a few days ago, but just this morning I drove by. Uh, it looks pretty much the same, except they had started to put uh, the windows in. And at this point, uh, we were curious in saying, well, let's go online and Google as the way of getting information yeah. these days. And yes. we found information about what's behind. Yeah. And so this is the next picture. And there we are. And that's going to be a Denny's restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that's when that was just fairly recently um, revealed. There's been controversy in your neighborhood about the Denny's restaurant getting a liquor license, which it has not gotten. But what we also discovered was that this is actually 
a building built on spec by a former Bank of Hawaii CEO, mm -hmm. and a million, $1.8 million was spent. Then Denny's came in. So the building got started, or the building was, was you know, under proposal. Mm -hmm. Denny's came in then as kind of the occupant. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is a relevant thing to bring up in this entire discussion, because Denny's as a corporate restaurant might also normally be re required to have a specific appearance that the corporation mm -hmm. demands that all of the mm -hmm. restaurants have. Mm -hmm. And as to whether that is being fulfilled here to their degree or not, to the degree that they <coughs> want, um, I yeah. couldn't say right this second. But and, you, and before we go to that point, let's just look at the what's what's read there. Exactly, the, the and window the, the windows, the windows, so the window molds, and they're put in as of today, by the way. Right, and so the windows do look like this. You're saying they You've do, seen them. they do. And it's, as you just pointed out, we no longer have to make windows that have individual panes of glass that look like this, because that's from a time when the technology only that, allowed. That was the medieval churches. Medieval churches, <laughs> and afterwards, even into the yeah. 19th century, yeah. glass was so expensive yeah. that making it, you didn't make huge pieces yeah. of it, and you put small panes of glass together yeah. with a framework. And we just pointed out in a previous show that, that we were critical about the architects who would do a tower in Kaka'ako for hard use and not doing a very exotic job, but they have done a great job in New York City building yeah. the Apple Store uh, pavilions, and they're all out of glass, and they're huge. So you can make glass yeah. pretty big oh, yeah. if you want. So there's once again, there is a sort of skewed, nostalgic, yep. you know, mm -hmm. sentimentality in the good old American diner. Exactly. You want to sit behind these mullions, you know, windows, yes. and we feel cozy. Never exactly. mind, we're in Hawaii. Exactly. Never mind. And there's some awnings here, but the lot is so small that there is, you know, there is probably, they're going to put seating along that, that facade, which is straight Cahill, where all the cars go. But in the back, where there's a nice little potentially park, this is where the cars park. That's going to be the so parking lot. So it's not lot. a park, but parking. Parking, and there's a 10 car parking lot there. Exactly. So, but, but again, uh, perfect what you point out, because we were thinking, okay, was this Dennis here with a corporate, or yeah. did they get sort of encouraged or forced to adjust their design? But not the case, because we retrieved the uh, old uh, sort of uh, realtor sign from years ago, which you showed at the very beginning. He was a private local yeah. investor who yes. basically intentionally said, okay, I want this to look this way. Yeah. So it is local, yeah. even though it isn't, right? Yeah, correct, I mean, correct. It, it has the trappings of looking exactly. local, right. So, but, okay, Dennis reminds us of an earlier show we did. Next picture, correct. please. What was that? That was our kooky cantilever canopies show, and the Denny's restaurant that's already in Waikiki at the end of um, Lures Road, at Kalia Road, is in an early 60s building. And so it fits in nicely. It's got this zigzaggy roof line, mm -hmm. the canopy over the street. It's got the nice holes through it for yeah. the palm trees to grow through. And it fits very nicely. I mean, that's kind of coffee shop architecture. Mm -hmm. And so for a Denny's to be in that is a yeah. really appropriate thing. And you also said that Dennis wasn't in there originally. No, that wasn't their original. They moved in there. So yeah. we have a similar case mm -hmm. that Dennis is willing. Right. You just have a good prime location. And exactly. then really, Dennis is willing to, to go, go in there. and maybe sacrifice the own corporate identity. Correct. Right? That's right. So that's Dennis right. is not Dennis is not to blame in this case, right? No, but that but that's a really important point. And I think that's probably what we're yeah, in our in our next photograph, what we're talking about is and this is a picture I took from a book that I have, which is about chain restaurants or just about restaurants in general in the United States, it was published in nineteen eighty six. Here's a Denny's restaurant, probably in California, mm -hmm. in the 1980s, early 70s, excuse mm -hmm. me. It's got the logo type that's very identifiable, the shape of the sign, and also the, the building itself. And this is a really important thing for lots of parts of the United States. When you build a freestanding commercial building, if you're part of a corporate organization, you make that building look the same mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. everybody from a distance driving yeah. towards it can yeah. say, that's a Denny's, that's yeah. a Home Depot, that's a whatever, and sure. that's what they were doing. Yeah. In this particular case, however, but, but even though it was a corporate, it still did the job. You see, it has a big hat. It's yeah, shading. It That's important, as you can see in this dry landscape there. Yeah. 
So even though it is a corporate, so we can once again, in our terminology of distinguishing between the invasive and the mm -hmm. exotic, we can say it's an exotic. It was probably made for the more Western part of the United States. Yeah, it was. States. And it also is very 70s in that the, the color scheme yeah. is mm -hmm. really 70s, mm -hmm. that orange and the red. Yeah. But it actually goes nicely with the background of the yellowy mm -hmm. California dead grass hillside. Very zeitgeist. Yes. And you contributed one that's even more, or from another zeitgeist that yeah. we love even more, which is a decade earlier. Earlier, right, right. so picture. the next picture is, this is a different, and this is also from that same book, this is a Denny's, an alternative Denny's to the one that you just saw. This was called their in-towner restaurant, mm -hmm. meaning it wasn't a freestanding one with a great big sign. It was supposed to look more subtle. It was supposed to look more solid, substantial, and fit in more with an urban mm -hmm. area rather than mm -hmm. a suburban or yeah. exurban area. Yeah. But, but, I mean, just like the cars of that era and everything that America made, this was done in style and, you know, in a, with a heroic sort of attitude. Absolutely. You got these pillars, you know, that anchor and, and hold the roof and everything is immaterial in between. Mm -hmm. And so this... There's big glass. There's big glass. There's, there's big glass. And that was way back. They were able... And <laughs> isn't that did. ironic, right? Yeah. The glass, the, 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 the newer the buildings get, the smaller the glass, <laughs> the glass gets, gets right. in contradiction to the techno technological... Uh, sort of opportunity. Right. So uh, next picture is is us trying to understand why is that and I took this pair of picture to the left is like what we think our visitors want to see. They want to see little waterfalls, mm -hmm. they want to see little fish ponds and in that fact Waikiki was all of that and yes, you try was. to bring this back but you can because this is prime tourist so Detail on the right is the technology that's hidden in there. Right. You get the point, the analogy to the roof and hiding the AC. Absolutely. There's a pipe there, and in best case, this is a cut of banana or something. So let's on not the right, but we don't know what it is. It. We so don't have to worry about that. Let's move on and get our spirits up again because I saw. And so in this sort of ocean of fakeness, sometimes we see these little islands of authenticity. Right. So I saw this guy here who was having fun from the palm uh, branches that the city workers cut off. He got a few and he was making these little things, including these funny little pineapples. Yes. So this is like a palm leaf pineapple thing. <laughs> and he was showcasing that with a winking eye and probably would have been happy to get a couple of dollars, but wasn't asking for. Right. So this, this brought up my hope to say, okay, this sort of partisan and sort of um, pirating uh, authenticity um, sort of movement, we need more of that. And so... Uh, I want to get one of those pineapples. Isn't that cool? And so it reminded me of, he was basically making it as way back from scratch yep. with the material, uh, causing no harm to the environment and, and having a lot of fun. And that reminds me of the uh, next picture of how the architecture has been here on the right. island, right? right? I mean, you're the expert in that. You have that in the museum and stuff. Correct, and so there were these, as you can see on the right, there were different types of structures that Hawaiians traditionally used for different types of uses, but uh, while they all have slightly different um, attributes that you can see, you also see that they use the same basic stuff. Those are branches, those are large trunks of trees, branches lashed together, and then a thatching of feely grass, so with a stone uh, foundational base. Yeah. And that's all the same stuff that you use in different ways. Yeah, and as nice as that is, as we agreed or encouraged your audience to think about that cultures have to evolve, that's you right. can't stay there no. uh, because the people you invite think this ha has always been the way and always has to be the way. Cultures no. have to evolve. They do. And so, uh, next picture is a prime example of evolution in architecture from our hood. And this is me looking, the big picture is me looking out uh, to uh, uh, Alfred Price's original entrance of the Honolulu Zoo. Picture at the top left is from a show uh, we did uh, with Jack Gilmer, who is the prime researcher on, on Alfred Price. And I was very sad uh, at the bottom, you can see at one day I heard a, a, a saw and some grinding noise and they were chopping off part of that cantilevering uh, roof uh, because they were scared to, uh, that it would fall down because they had not done the maintenance they should yeah. have done. So the right. termites got in there. Yeah. But instead of repairing that, this is a register. This is under the historic register. Right. In, instead of doing that, 
I'm, I'm sorry, my feeling is looking at that sad thing uh, on a daily basis. It's basically um, uh, basically demolition uh, through denial. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like throwing out, you know, instead of building this sort of fake cheesy thing a few blocks away, right. what about the Denny's would have moved in here? Mm -hmm. And maybe it would have been a more sort of, you know, ticky Dennis, yeah. but you would have prime outdoor seating area. Yeah. And you would have had a use for the building again, Correct. and probably through the income you make, you could keep the building up. Right. Again, we're not advocating that a dentist would Correct. be the best use for this. No, uh, and in fact, there are restrictions as to how much commercial activity can happen in Kapilani Park anyway, which exactly. would probably preclude that. But but my motivation comes from the next picture from a project we did a few years ago, where we were, you know, uh, <clears throat> basically confronted with a 300 plus uh, year old farmhouse. That wouldn't go anywhere anymore. It was it was damp and and yeah. rotting away. So the question was, bulldoze it or right. go with the time and do a critical reconstruction. Correct. Uh, and basically, you know, pass it on to the next generation who wanted a new house and were able to fulfill their dreams within the family uh, heritage of the old house. And that is a that's a residence. That's a residence. Yeah. yeah. So um, and so a residence is the next picture, which uh, goes back to the last show we had. We had with Chief Sock about the fire rating, and this is uh, Nick Civitano and his Dick Arc project and myself collaborating on potential. And this is the right to the point of the 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 the, the name of the show, which is right. tactical tropical tectonics. Right. So instead of importing all this stuff that doesn't belong here, right. doesn't really perform so well here, why don't you go from the stuff you have, as the ancestors have done, but you can't do this in the way you can't thatch anymore, there's no, no thatch left, no. fire, cold has no, been more strict, absolutely. so you can't build and you shouldn't. Right. And you for sure shouldn't make it look like and Correct. pretend, right? Correct. So try to sort of distill a new aesthetics out of the same thinking of an innovative use of abundant local materials. And we want to now have the camera go back to the studio, please, here. And this is, once again, what we explained last time here. This is basically taking, and can you hold up that other sample? What kind of wood is that? Is this is ironwood. And ironwood is an introduced tree from Asia that mm -hmm. grows very quickly mm -hmm. and is invasive, mm -hmm. and uh, but as the name implies, is nice and strong. Yeah. So let's cut and, it down and use it. And, and we could do albicia, and yes, we could we do could. Um, other pieces Eucalyptus. of wood. Eucalyptus. And, and their, their weakness, exactly, also on the big island, they have, and that's what Nick did too with our eucalyptus. You can then cut it into boards and cross compose it and right. different than here in that stage where we nailed it but last time we had introduced this uh, genius product here new product by the Austrian company Beck called Ligno Lock where you basically shoot these into and it friction wells the nail into the wood so but it's a wooden nail. It's a wooden nail. So yeah. it's just wood that goes back to the guy who right. does these right. cute little things you want, the pineapple right. palm leaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is just palm leaves. There isn't any yeah. glue. There isn't anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right? It's not made in China and designed in Hawaii like everything we sell right. to the tourists, right? Right. right? And maybe you can find a more sort of organic water membrane. And this is basically just other boards. By the way, everything is heat treated, um, uh, a process that I've been uh, researching on for many years, which also enhances enhances the longevity of wood. And then you could do the last step. We're researching on borating. We use the sea salt, are abundant, and basically uh, treat the wood. And then also the termites potentially don't like it anymore. So you end up with this all local, yeah. you know, all bioclimatic right. stuff, no cavity, everything right. we're talking about. Correct. We're just throwing this out and saying, this is evolution of tradition. Right. And we're sure the guests will, over the time, understand that Correct. and appreciate that Correct. we didn't like stop you know, at no, no, time. no. We're this is innovation. In this is technological innovation. Too. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And the next picture, why this is so familiar to me, we ha I, I know this problem of Western civilizations. I had to say the f the top row is is 300 year old farmhouses where our uh, southern uh, German offices that my sister and her partner runs. These are 300 year old farmhouses. So this neighborhood has the toughest design guidelines in entire Germany. They tell you the proportions, mm. uh, the uh, materiality, yeah. everything they prescribe. And they desperately think, just like here, yeah. that way you can basically keep tradition. But you can't. Because if you allow a different thinking, a different attitude, which is capitalism, capitalism is going to hijack your culturally yeah. ambitious ideas. 
it's going to commercialize it. So the middle row is how these houses look like that developers built. And they say, we got the job done. You see there's wood, there's yeah. plaster, but it's not anywhere close to, and at the very right, the, the right column is the interior. Yeah. So you see that old farmhouse out of solid timber yes, locks. Yes, right, right. I mean, this is rustic, and it also feels good in there because it's basically solid timber that right. has a good thermal performance. The middle picture on that, to the right, is how that cheesy developer house looks, and then the bottom is us trying to evolve that tradition. But we didn't uh, build with the old materials. We built with cutting edge, uh, sandwich insulated concrete, with cross laminated timber, a thermally modified, uh, uh, um, basically poplar wood facade as a rain screen. And then this is my sister Cynthia and in her office basically working there. And you see from a distance the bottom row and the top mm -hmm. row. You know, they're family members, but this is grandfather up there, right. and this is the grandson correct. down there, right? Correct, correct, correct. And, the, and, the, and there's an integrity to the construction mm -hmm. that isn't visible from the outside, but you know it's there. Exactly. And that's one of the things that the pictures in the middle show that that integrity yeah. isn't there. And when we finish up with the building we're talking about right now, that also is the same situation in that... It's and, a facade yeah. too. And that's what we tried here when I came. Next picture is for uh, for DHHL with BIA and our School of Architecture to do the new Hawaii home. And you can see we did this explosive exonometric to explain it's a kit of parts just way back where there are sticks and they're, yeah. they're, they're thatching and they're latching. It's the same kind of philosophy. But top right, we introduced a cutting edge new material that comes from Australia. It's aluminum wooden louver. It's called Eco Shade, and you can sleep. We propose it for the central uh, space there. You can sleep and see the stars, and when it rains, there's a little rain sensor, and it closes <laughs> it. I mean, how cool is that? And that's the evolution. I believe this is what the ancestors would have used if yes, they would have had it. If they uh, had it, right. And let's move on. Can cost ever be? You said 1.8 yeah. million isn't so much. We had $50 per square foot for this community grocery store here, and it, we didn't let it be an excuse. And this is. You know, it has a lot to do with here, whereas here some people say it's about sticks. We say this was about bones, you know, and yes. just make an exoskeleton as right. they've done here and infill it. And you've always been talking, this is why I threw in the next two pictures about the, the you know, how long do these buildings even stay right. right? Correct. And next picture, please. Uh, this was us here. To the right is when it was completed. And you can see to the left is me last year doing post-occupancy evaluation, evidence-based design documentation. And all the tenants have changed. But the structure is robust enough to Correct. basically allow that. Right. Uh, next picture, we get close to the end of the show about evolution. If you Google for Hawaii Holly, which right. I did, Correct. and then I found the pictures we showed at the very, you know, the middle right. of the show. Correct. Good. Uh, I'm very happy to see this here popping up because this is our fellow Tropic here. Uh, he did the inaugural show on, on in this program here. Uh, David Rockwood, who basically, with his emerging uh, talents, uh, participated in this national competition of the Solar Decathlon. And this is their proposition, basically, for the evolution of a, of a Hawaii holiday. Right. And it doesn't look at all like no. the old, because that was then, but now it's Correct. now. And this is wooden trusses, uh, basically CNC milled. And the, the outer skin is basically strips of photovoltaics with openings in between so the trades can go through and the wind can go through and sun can go through, but it shades the building at the same time it harvests its own Correct. energy. Our point again, right. maybe the ancestors would have gone that That's way. That's right. How about that? That's right. Last picture before the very last picture um, is, is our main criticism is about you should have gone tall on that side. And I wished for a while we would have pushed our stratosphere, Lanai Grove, that the very bottom picture left is from a show I did, and it was introducing one of the potential residents. Yeah. And this is Jeff, who is another urban nomad, right. who's making lays the actual way. Right. He's getting them probably in your front yard around Diamond Head, <laughs> he tells me, and, and makes lays. And this would have been a flash mob project that is cargo steel containers that could have gone up on that side right. over a weekend. And whenever the client or the owner thinks he's right. going to develop it, we could move on. Correct. But talking humanity and humility, we would have made a contribution to the many who are basically, um, uh, uh, you know, basically cut out of culture right. here in society because right. we have too many. Right. So we're, we're, we're getting outraged about a liquor license, which, you know, in Germany, the, the, the yeah. drinking age is down to 16. So I'm not the one to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, one. Right. But we get outraged about that. But we don't get around outraged about the architecture, about tectonics, 
about typology, about zoning, about, about waste of land. We don't get outraged about that one. And that is sort of, but talking uh, humility, we're at the end of the show. We want to close it with that one. And what day is tomorrow? Well, and what tomorrow is Valentine's tell? Day. So there's a little happy group of Valentine cards from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s from when they all, the kids gave out numbers of Valentines back in those days. And card companies in the mainland printed a whole bunch of Hawaiian-themed cards along with a lot of other different mm -hmm. types of motifs. Mm -hmm. So here's our wish to everybody watching that they have a happy Valentine's Day Hawaiian style. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So happy Valentine's to everyone, to my sweetheart Suzanne. All the other loved ones in the out who, there who are out there, yes, and, yes, yes. And um, I want to say, stay tuned. We hope to see you next week for a show that we basically introduce the exotic entrepreneur, uh, Peter Shi, who is a great, legendary, oh, iconic architect yeah. who's done a lot of innovative yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we're yeah, going to look yeah. into that. So look forward to have you back for that. Happy Valentine's. <laughs>